Welcome, and today we're going to be doing triple integrals. Uh, I don't like my uh, brush stroke. Triple integrals. And they're a lot like double integrals. We have some region, we'll call it, um, we'll call it E. And it's going to be some set X, Y, Z that lives in three dimensions subject to some conditions dot 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 okay so that's the idea and we write them down just like we would for a double integral but we put three integral signs and we indicate that we're going to integrate over this 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 domain e this set and it's going to be oh, sorry oop. there we go and we call it dv now. So v, of course, is a uh, small volume element. All right, all right. So the idea is you have some sort of three-dimensional um, uh, region of space. We'll call it E. And inside of it, we uh, we're going to be taking a you take some small little box like this and there's a a, a a dx there a dy and a dz or d delta x delta y and delta z and inside the box maybe in the center of it we're going to have a point x0 uh, y0 and z0 and of course we're going to have our representative point that representative point has a representative point and then we have a value associated with it the f value is f of x0 y0 z0 and of course we just make more boxes in the space like this. We essentially lay bricks inside all of the space like that. And just keep going all throughout. And so what you get is that this triple integral will be a triple sum now from i equals one to n uh, J equals 1 to M, and a K equals 1 to, uh, we'll call it capital P, some function, X, I, Y, J, and uh, Z, K, and then we have a delta X, delta Y, and delta Z. All right, so the idea is if you take a three-dimensional space, and you get a bunch of a, a bunch of partitions, which is going to be a bricks, and you put in a, a bunch of representative values. And as long as your bricks are small enough that they tile out or brick out the space uh, well enough, uh, you're going to get a good approximation to the triple integral by doing this triple sum uh, in MATLAB or in any kind of computational language. You're going to have to do a, you know, three for loops, and you're going to have to find some way of orderly um, making sure you get every little box. Okay, all right. So let's talk about an example. Um, let's talk about an example uh, of a specific E. So I'm going to actually do problem 14 in the book. Okay. So our region E is going to be the, uh, uh, of the form x comma y comma z, subject to the conditions, and the, these are the conditions. That uh, y is is equal is bounded by the regions uh, y is equal to x squared. I'm going to say bounded by. So maybe I'll put a little bigger brackets there. Bounded by y equals x squared. Uh, x equals y squared. This could also be written um, y is equal to um, square root of x. Okay. And we'll see that in a second. And finally, that z is equal to 0, and z is equal to x plus y. 
All right, so that's a lot of conditions. Let's see if we can figure out what this looks like. Okay, so, uh, and the function that we want to integrate is going to be, of the, will, will just be um, x comma y. So there's actually no z dependence in here, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, uh, we'll see what we can do with this. So that so this is the thing we want to do. We want to compute this integral with this function over this set. Okay. All right. And and again, these conditions here represent the bounding uh, areas, if you will, that enclose uh, the set E. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what this looks like, or see if we can draw a picture. So I'm going to draw. There's my z-axis. And there is my, I'll call that my y-axis. Uh, and then here is my x-axis. Okay, so um, y equals x squared. Well, that's going to be a parabola. It looks kind of like this. So there's y going off in the negative direction. Like that. Got to do a little erasing here. Make sure I get my artwork appropriate. Okay, and then we have uh, y, x, x equals y squared, or rather y equals square root of x. And that's going to go like this. And it's going to meet at this point. And that point is, of course, 1 comma 1, right? That's the point where they intersect. So we see that there's this uh, maybe a bounding region over the top of all of that. All right, finally, uh, z equals zero. Well, that's just the that's just this plane here. All of this, and then z equals x plus y. This is the one that's a little bit on a cant. It might be hard to draw this, but basically, what we're talking about is a a plane that goes out like this. And if I was going to draw what this looks like, it's going to have, and it's going to be a dotted line coming down there. I'd say. So it's going to look a little like a, well, I don't know what it'll look like, but it's going to kind of go like that. That's one side, so it kind of looks a little bit like maybe an airplane wing. And then it comes around on that side there. So this plane here, this plane, has a normal that you can, an outward normal that would come out of it. It's going to be kind of pointing towards the z-axis there. That normal will be... Um, well, if we take our plane, so z equals x plus y, that can be written as 0 equals um, uh, z minus x minus y. Uh, so uh, the normal, of course, is going to be uh, 1 minus 1 minus 1. So that makes sense, right? So we have uh, the x directions are going to be pointing back that way, and the z direction is going to be pointing. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I need to write this the other way. Uh, that's not the right way to write it. It's going to be um, negative 1, negative 1, 1, right? So that's the z-coordinate. So the z-coordinate is pointing up towards the z-axis, and the x and y uh, directions are going to be pointing in the negative, in the negative way. So, so there's our shape. All right, so how do we want to break this up? Well, uh, in the book, they call this type of region a type one region because we can think of it as that E is actually a set X comma Y comma Z of, of points such that um, that X comma Y are in some region call it D an area region and Z is is enclosed between the planes 0 and x plus y. Okay, so what is this region D? Well, the region D is, of course, this, this little football-looking shape right there. So D, then, is going to be x comma y. And now, it's a two-dimensional set, such that um, x is going to be, it'll, x will range between 0 and 1. And y will range between x squared and square root of x, right? So this is looking at it this way, 
Um, so is that right? Um, uh, it, let's see. So this right here is is our x squared. You know, I think I had drawn this backwards. I'm sorry, guys. And that is our uh, square root of x. So y ranges between that and, sorry, x here ranges between 0 and 1. Okay, so there we go. All right, so that looks better. All right, so again, this is that region. Call it D. All right, so let's get a new piece of paper here and see if we can now integrate this. So uh, when we've broken up the region uh, E into this form, x comma y comma z, such that x comma y are in D and z is between 0 and x plus y, where D is equal to this region. So again, what we're looking at here is that's uh, y is equal to x squared. And that is, so this right here down there is y equals x squared. And this is y is equal to square root of x. So that's that region D. Call it D. All right. So uh, what are we going to do then is um, how are we going to make this integral then? So we write down the abstract form of the integral first. We always do this. This is a way to organize our thoughts. DV. All right. So we're going to break this up into one single dimensional integral and another area integral. So we know we've defined D already like that. And now I'm going to put inside the two-dimensional integral a single integral, and that's over the region right here. So that's going to be from, so this is going to be an xy integral right there. And this one here is going to be a z-only integral, and it's going to go from 0 to x plus y. Okay, And the function then is going to be x plus y. It's going to be dz. And then we put on the outside dA. All right, so now we're going to compute this, just the inter integral here. All right, so x, plus, x times y isn't a function of z, so that's a pretty straightforward one to do. So we'll do it over here. D, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the antiderivative of this. Because this is a constant with respect to z, uh, it's just going to be xy times z. And we evaluate the limits of integration, 0 x plus y. All right. So we always have to remember what role uh, each variable plays within each integral. And this time we're focused only on z. So let's do that. So again, I'm going to leave the area integral stays by itself and we evaluate it. It's going to be x times y. And it's going to be um, just x plus y. That's all we get, dA. All right. So we can multiply this through. It's going to be x squared y plus y squared x, okay, dA. Now we have to integrate over the region D. So we've broken our integral three-dimensional integral down into a single dimension, which we've just done, but we have two more dimensions to do, so we have a dA to contend with. All right, so for this, we then do the same thing. I see a good way to iterate the integral is to put x on the outside because it's running between two, uh, two constants. And then and I'll put the y, dy integral on the inside because that's running as a function between two bounding functions of x. Uh, and that will go from x squared to square root of x. And that will go, and this will be x squared times y plus y squared times x dy. So we'll put brackets around that, dx. All right, we're getting close, 0 to 1. And now we're taking this, so we're looking at the y's only, okay? So the x's are constants. We think of them as fixed parameters, so x squared. And that becomes a y squared over 2. Plus, and we see there's an x times y cubed over 3. 
and then we're going to evaluate at the limits of integration x squared root x dx 0 to 1. All right, so let's evaluate this. So if, remember, we're plugging in these limits of integration here to y. We have to keep remembering that. So we have an x squared and then over 2. And then we're going to put root x in there. So we get an x plus, and then we put a root root x in there, so we're going to get an x times x to the 3 halves over 3. And then finally we subtract and we get a x squared over 2. x squared inside of a y squared becomes a x to the 4th. And then also a minus x over 3. Uh, um, so we have an x squared inside that and that becomes an x to the six. Is that right? That looks right. Okay. All right. And then we have a dx on the south side of everything. All right. We're getting very close. Now uh, uh, we can clean this up a little bit like this. That becomes an x cubed over two. And we see that's a three halves. So that becomes a x uh, five halves over three. And a minus, we got a 4 and a 2, so that becomes an x to the 6 over 2. And then we have an x to the 6 times x becomes a minus x to the 7th over 3 dx. All right, so integrals like this are really nice because the 0, the lat limit of integrations, uh, 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 zeroes everything out. And then we just <coughs> plug in 1, so we just have to compute the antiderivatives and plug in 1. So that becomes, uh, we have to divide by 4, so it becomes a... 8, and then a 5 halves becomes a 7 halves, so it becomes a 3 uh, times 7 halves, and then we have a 6, so that becomes a 2 times 7, and then finally minus, we have a uh, 1 over 3 times 8. Now I can, I can expect that you can do some arithmetic here and reduce that down, but that right there is a numerical answer I can be happy with. So thank you, and hopefully this clarifies how to do triple integrals.